Hey everyone, um, I thought this was a perfect place to discuss undersea fiber optic cables, or is it submarine cables? These are the cables that power the internet and give you access to the world wide web, allow you to send emails or dick pics, um, Instagram your food or whatever it is you happen to be doing, or chatting to someone halfway around the world. It's not satellites, these are the cables that connect and power our world. Now I'm in Belito, which is very close to Durban in South Africa, which is, has the sixth busiest port in the world. The significance of that is if you're building a landing station for your fiber optic cable, you wouldn't want it anywhere near these fucking ships that are waiting out in the harbor because they have anchors and they fuck up our fiber optic cabling. So the landing station for Seacom is built way up the South African coast away from any of these ships so as to protect that cable and ensure it runs all the time. Now inside these uh, cables there's usually about two to four fibers which I found very surprising but you can literally run South Africa or four fibers but it's not just fiber optic cabling inside there's a layer of copper and then there's further um, layers of like protective sheath. The copper is to power an optical repeater that has to be built into the cable every 100 kilometers. If you read a lot of articles online, you'll get these idiots who'll say, oh, these copper cables, it's a fiber optic cable, why does it need that? Uh, fiber optic cables can go for very long distances, but not indefinitely. So the, the sweet spot we normally work with is about 100 kilometers, and we build an optical repeater into the cable to regenerate that signal so that it can travel all the way up the coastline to where it needs to go so that that communication remains as it was, or it should be. So anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it informative and you got some good use out of it. And I will see you next time, so bye-bye.